Today we will be looking at uh, Gap Year by Jackie Kate, and it is another sort of you could call it like family poem, or um, it's another kind of poem based on uh, like the sort of family relationship or the family dynamic. And um, this this poem by this poem by Jackie Kate could be seen to be sort of a poem where she is not literally talking about her own life, but more so she's sort of taking on sort of the role of like a speaker imagining something or it's like half of her life and half of not her life uh, a good tip i can give to you in terms of like when you're trying to understand different texts especially poetry is to uh, just keep in mind that the speaker isn't always the writer or that the writer isn't always the speaker in other words sometimes the writer will take on a uh, what do you call it they will take on a voice um in order to a persona, if you like, in order to try and like talk about something or you know explain something, this isn't just something that happens in uh, in poetry, like written poetry, but it also happens in, for example, like rap music, like um, <clears throat> excuse me, like uh, like there's a famous song by Immortal Technique called "Dance with the Devil," a very dark song, in which he in which he tells the story of uh, a man who. Wanted to be a criminal, sort of how he goes down that path. There's other, there's other kind of, there's other kind of um, songs which are just like that. I think, for example, also like uh, with like Tupac when he made this song, um, "Me and My Girlfriend." He's talking about he's he's in the mind. Uh, no, no, Ghost actually is a better example. The song by Tupac, Ghost, when he's uh, he's talking about uh, m imagining himself coming back to life. Okay, after he's been killed and so on now uh, you can imagine he's like so anyway the point is the speaker as in the person talking isn't necessarily the poet it's a good tip just to imagine that the speaker is the speaker and just take them as like a character or something like that and just see them that way it helps you to not get confused okay anyway so in this in this um in this poem by jackie Kay, um it begins it's called gap pure and it begins by talking about the sort of soon to uh, happen birth of a child and um, the poem itself is dedicated to the child okay, by the speaker and um, it begins before the child is even born okay so it says I remember your Moses basket before you were born this is a Moses basket and you can see you can see from the beginning of the poem Okay, that the speaker has a lot of love for the child, and also the uh, the metaphor or the comparison. It's not technically a metaphor; it's a comparison, but it's not technically a metaphor. The comparison here of the speakers, I guess, as a metaphor. Okay, as a metaphor, the comparison here of the the baby's basket that's that's gonna um, that is gonna be placed into after it's born to the basket of Moses makes the makes the child out to be like special something like that yeah chosen in some kind of way divinely chosen something like that yeah it's got a light shining on it even before it's born it's like the chosen one something like that so you can see that the speaker is sort of laying out the fact that she loves the kid a lot even before he is even born okay so before he's even born she has a lot of love for him there's obviously the love of a mother and she think, looks at him as if he's like divine, he's like special, he's like blessed in some way. And she's just very excited and um, just waiting for him to be to be born. Okay, so she can put him in the basket. And um, uh, yes, okay, good. Now, now the, the poem then moves on, okay, to the kid, you know, talks a little bit about her sort of pregnancy or being carrying the child and all that walking around. The changes that she has physically and then after that the the poem switches okay to then talking about that the kid was born and now he's sort of grown up and he's gone out into the world okay he's began his hero's journey if you like he's began his story of independence and at this point he's 18 he's big boy he's six foot two strong and he is traveling through south america and uh, at this point in the poem, the speaker is basically reflecting on his journey, reflecting on his, his travels. And um, 
the adventure that he is embarking on. Um, in a way, you can think about this as a sort of captures like the the process that parents kind of go through, which is that the the child is, and I guess mothers especially, that the child is, you know, not there, and then the child is extremely vulnerable in need of constant care and protection and you know love and all that. And then eventually the child reaches a point to where they mature and then they, they go out into the world and now they're on their sort of own adventure. And it kind of demonstrates the 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 sense here of the fear of the, the mother or something like that to where she is like, you know, she wants to look after him, she wants to protect him, um, even though he's far away, something like that. Yeah, she still looks at him as if he's like that little baby in the basket. Okay. Okay, so she says, I feel like a home alone mother. All the lights have gone out in the hall, and now I'm wearing your large black slippers. So she's wearing his shoes, because she misses them, obviously. Flip-flopping into your empty bedroom. Same thing. Trying to imagine you in your bed, um, where where he'd be safe. Huh? Where he'd, he would be safe in the house. I stare at the photos you send by messenger. You're on top of the world, arms outstretched, eager. So basically, the the sun has gone out. The son has gone out into the world and now he's just basically keeping in touch through his phone and sending her pictures and things of where he's going and what he's doing. You can say that this poem kind of captures the... Um, if we say if we say mother and son from Ian Crichton Smith captures, you know, where the, where the parent-child relationship goes wrong, the mother-son relationship goes wrong... You could say this poem maybe captures where it goes right. It's like the good version of it, something like that, yeah? Which is, uh, it captures sort of the son being raised in such a way that he, he feels independent enough, strong enough um, to be able to go out on his own and to have his own adventure. Um, and the mother not being so overly involved or not being so sort of overly protective or she hasn't been so overly critical towards him like in mother and son she hasn't damaged him in such a way that he basically you know he feels afraid or he feels hesitant to go out he, instead the son he's all the way in south america never mind <laughs> never mind going somewhere local he's all the way in south america um so you could say this is the ideal yeah this is probably the ideal of what you'd want and this is also representative, I think, of like the, to some extent, maybe the upper working class, middle class, and above experience. Maybe not even working class yet. Yeah. Because in a sense, the working class experience is not like this yet, yeah, I don't think. Like the truly working class experience is not like this. What I'm saying is, um, this captures the sort of experience of the son who grows up without any real sort of traumatic experiences. If you look at Mother and Son by Crichton Smith, you'll see the opposite. That would be probably more like the actual um, working class experience, yeah, or growing up more impoverished experience, where the basically the, the child grows up with a number of different traumatic experiences, which basically damage him in such a way that... Uh, I'll give you an example here. There's, there's kids that grow up in in real difficulty who for them leaving their area, their postcode, leaving that their leaving their postcode is like a is like a thing that would make them nervous, it would make them hesitant, it would make them worried. Never mind leaving the country and going to <laughs> going to South America. And also the fact that he has the money to do this at eighteen. Um Again, it reflects a sort of middle class or upper, you know, lower middle class or middle class and above type experience. And there's nothing wrong with that yet. She's obviously, she's done, she's done well for herself and she was able to give her son a good life. It's the, yes, the ideal, yes, the ideal, but it's just to recognize that this is not the experience of many people. Yeah, many people, this is not their experience. The experience of many people is um, a holiday is like going to... I don't know, like uh, Edinburgh or something like that. <laughs> That's a holiday. Or going to like, 
a holiday might be going to like a uh, theme park once a year in your city, something like that, yeah. Or 20 minutes away from your city, something like that. Okay, anyway. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, so she goes on to say, uh, my heart soars like the birds in, the, in your bright, bright blue skies. My love glows like the sunrise over the lost city. Uh, so she's just looking basically at the picture of um, her son, his little boy, who's small. And um, uh, and she's basically happy and she feels good about him being out in the world and him exploring. I have a son out in the big wide world, so she's proud of him and, and, and what he's done for himself. where he's gone a flip and a skip ago you were dreaming in your basket basically that you know time has passed very quickly when he was small to where he is at this point and yeah i think this this poem very nicely captures like i said the sort of the sort of like middle class or upper upper work i don't even know if you call it working class middle class experience and above of like this is the typical journey that you know kids have which is that they go high school they take a gap year they go travel a bit and then they have their adventure and come back go to university and all that live a good life yeah which is good that's good that's the ideal yeah that's the ideal um yeah it's just important to keep in mind that this is not like i said it's it's good huh? it's the ideal it's just it's not their it's not the experience of uh many people Many people don't have the experience. I think it's good to have all these different perspectives. I think this poem serves to to illustrate a good ideal. This is what you'd love to have. It's like the positive, like I said. And then I think things like hip hop and things like poems like Mother and Son and so on, things like that, they they illustrate the other side, people who don't have it so good. Um and it's important to 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 recognize all these different all these different, you know, experiences. I think it's important. So that, um, because some of you, this will be your experience and, you know, congratulations to you. That's great. Whereas for others of you, this won't be your experience and <laughs> you'll be happy just to, you know, be eating steak once a month or something or steak on your birthday, something like that. Yeah. If you can get it. Um, okay. Anyway, anyway, it's just interesting. Okay. It's just something interesting to think about. Um, so that's the, that's the poem. Okay. It's, it's just a story about. Uh, son on a gap year, mums raised them well, she did a good job and he was able to go on his adventure and this sort of shows the love between them and uh, overall just a positive nice kind of happy poem